Satnam, welcome. Uh, so I'm going to now offer the video for uh, liver series that we're working on this month. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that. And let me just get started setting everything up. So um, I decided to work on the liver this month, um, primarily because from the Chinese medicine perspective, um, the liver, well, from Eastern traditions um, all around, the liver has many functions and um, as an organ, it's a really important organ for a lot of reasons. Um, specifically from the Chinese medicine tradition, um, the liver in the spring, because it has to do with blood, it's a nourishing organ. It is related to it's, it's very much, springtime is a good time to work with the liver. And it has to do with the new, the new energies of the spring. Um, and it has to do with purifying, right? So blood is a really important part of your body to nourish and to purify your entire system. From a yogic perspective, your blood chemistry has a lot to do with your psyche. And so as we cleanse our blood, we have more um, higher thinking and higher possibilities in the psyche, um, which is really important when we're dealing with a lot of really crazy and, and very stressful times. Um, so being spring, supporting the liver, the liver also helps us with um, pathogens in general. So we have a way to strengthen our inner body in a way that can support us at this time. The other thing about the liver is that as much as it is a physical organ, it also, in the psyche, it helps us really plan. It helps us set the conditions to be able to understand what needs to happen at that time. And being in a space at this moment where there's so much uncertainty, I just feel my sense is that it's really helpful and supportive to have and develop an organ that really helps us be able to clarify what needs to be done at this time. Um, because there's a lot of ways we can choose to use our energy that get very dissipated and then don't serve us. And there's a way in which when the liver is strong, it gives us the clarity of understanding the actions that need to be taken. And maybe those actions are physically non-action. And I will be talking more about why non-action is a really powerful action. And it's the quality of our presence in that non-action space that really makes that supportive. So for now, I would like to ask you as always to just come and center inward through the breath as you close your eyes, gently roll them up, focus them inward at the brow point. And just rest your awareness on the breath and the flow of the breath. Hands are in Gyan Mudra, index and thumb tips together. Resting wrists on the knees, breathing long and deep. Bringing your awareness to your chin, Allowing your chin to be at a right angle to the body, parallel to the floor, applying neck lock to allow the spine to lengthen from the base to the top of the head. And finally, inviting you to really settle into the weight of the body on the mat or the chair, wherever you're sitting right now. And allowing the weight of the body to bring those sit bones and really press the sit bones down as you allow the body to lengthen upwards, chest lifting, shoulders relaxing, heart open. And then just focus on the breath and the flow of the breath, inhaling sats, exhaling nam. As you bring your awareness fully to this present moment through the breath and to the sound currents within you, Inviting you to bring your awareness to your heart space. So as we recognize and acknowledge that as we work with ourselves, so do we bring service to everything and everyone around me. Just take, around, take a moment to 
Notice if there's anybody you're particularly holding in your heart today, any person or situation you would like to dedicate your practice to and bring that into the circle. And as we hold that space, just rubbing palms together, as we bring palms together, thumbs into the sternum, inhale deep. Suspending the breath as you draw your awareness deep within and exhale. Inhale again. And exhale. Inhaling one last time. On the exhale, tuning in with Adi Mantra for guidance and protection. Inhale. Om Namo Guru Om Namo Guru Om Namo Guru Namo Inhale, suspending the breath, drawing your awareness inward, allowing the vibrations to flow in through and around you, guiding, purifying, protecting. Exhale as you relax, hands back down into Gyan Mudra, resting in the experience of that awareness of the sound current and the presence of your body right now. Great. So I just want to start with a little bit of warm up. We're going to do a cat and cow coming onto all fours, knees under the hips, hands under the shoulders. Inhale as you press the navel, head rises. Exhale as you reverse, inhaling and exhaling, really relaxing the shoulders, making sure that you're bringing, tucking the chin in as the head comes down to really release any tightness and holding patterns from the neck. Inhale and exhale. Remember to work within the limits of your own body, pain-free range of motion, alternating and adjusting as you need. Moving at your own rhythm. Now inhale, pressing the navel down, heart open. Exhale as you stretch it back, just relax there. And just notice how the body receives that. Bringing hands to the knees, press down to lift the body up one vertebra at a time with the head being the last thing to rise up. We're gonna come and extend the legs out in front of us. We're gonna work with the sciatic nerve. It's always a nice nerve to stretch. You're gonna inhale center, exhale as you lengthen forward. Remember, you're not trying to get anywhere. You're keeping those knees straight, heels pressed through, and you're really keeping the heart open. So the chin is in. If it works for you, grasping the toes. If not, grasping the ankles, wherever you can extend into the stretch without collapsing into it. You're gonna grab whatever part that is. You inhale as you open the heart, exhale as you lengthen forward. Again, keeping that chin at a right angle to the body. This is a dynamic stretch. Allow yourself to breathe powerfully through the stretch. Inhale. 
Inhale up, exhale down, relax the shoulders, move from the hips. Inhaling sat, exhaling down. And inhale up, suspend the breath, contain the posture, stretch into it. And exhale as you slowly walk the hands back, just rest there, noticing how the body receives that. Same within, curious and open to that experience. Good, stretch the legs out, windshield wipers, shake it out. Okay, we're ready for our liver series. Now, for the series, we're gonna be using Breath of Fire. So if you're relatively new to Breath of Fire, Breath of Fire is a relatively quick breath. It's like a panting dog, but you're really moving from the nose. Um, so a good way to settle into Breath of Fire is to bring your hands to the navel, stick your tongue out, and begin to pant like a dog through your mouth. So what you'll notice as you do that is that you're really pumping the navel and the navel as it pushes in, pushes air out and your inhale is just really coming because you're relaxing the navel. So you're gonna do the same thing but you're just going to close your mouth and you're going to create the same sensation through your nose. So you really want to pay attention to the breath coming in and out through the nostrils because breath of fire is equal parts inhale, exhale. It's easy to accentuate the exhale. But you really want to feel that rhythm, satnam, 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 equal parts in and out. So you should really feel the nostrils and the breath in and out through that. So if you're new to it, know that everything starts by the mechanics. And then as you get comfortable with relaxing the navel and working with that, then your breath of fire will just come into it because the speed comes later. It's really the quality of the, of the breath that you really want to mechanize first. Um, breath of fire is a very purifying breath. This particular Kriya is working with all of the lobes and massaging the, all of the lobes around the liver. Um, so all the poses that we're using are helping that. And then um, we do a lot of breath of fire. It's a very cleansing um, Kriya. So if for some reason you're feeling kind of out of sorts, um, just do long deep breathing. Now, ladies, remember if you are in the first three days of your menses cycle, Make sure that you go into long, deep breathing because um, breath of fire counteracts what's happening in your body at that time. And for those of you who are pregnant, uh, remember that the first trimester, you're pretty much able to do almost everything. Um, really easing up on the navel is always a really good advice. But then after that, always ask your healthcare provider for advice. Um, but the advice from us is to really just ease up on certain postures and I'll just um, keep that in mind. Um, you know, you don't want to do a lot of um, twerking movements, um, being gentle with all of that, being gentle with compression, do not do any um, inverted poses. Um, so, and then always do long deep breathing, ease up on any navel work. You really just want to be very caring for your baby. Um, so we're going to start by interlacing fingers and drying them into uh, a basket. And you're just going to bring them straight out in front of you and we're gonna hold this posture um, with breath of fire. So again, the most important thing is to root through your sit bones so you can lift and really keep yourself. Remember, if you need to have extra support, if you're finding that you're collapsing back, it's really important to just tuck a blanket or a pillow or something right at the base. That'll help you 
stay upright and that will really help release the tension in the shoulders and the neck. You want to keep the head above the heart, above the hips. So we're going to bring the arms straight out in front with the, with the, the elbows straight. Your eyes are going to be closed, focused inward through the brow point. And we're just going to begin breath of fire. We're going to hold this posture for two minutes. So just go ahead and begin. Remember to keep your chin at a right angle to the body. Relax the shoulders. Really lengthen through by sitting into the sit bones. And you should be able to do breath of fire all day. So just if it feels like you're losing breath, you're probably just working really hard at it. So let go of the work and focus on the quality, the right effort really allowing the navel to just simply pull in and out and just making it light. It doesn't have to be really intense. It can just be very light so that you're just allowing the breath to go in and out. Keep those eyes focused inward at the brow point and mentally vibrate sat nam, sat nam, sat nam, sat nam. You're doing beautiful, almost there. Just less than a, less, just about 20 seconds to go. You're doing great. Now inhale deep. Suspend the breath, squeeze the root back, squeeze, squeeze sex organs, rectum, navel, draw that whole lower triangle in, just moving the energy up the spine. Exhale as you relax and rest and just notice how the body receives that experience. Coming into that easy pose. Remember that these pauses in between are these spaces of integration are very important. So give yourself permission to just witness and open your awareness. Now the next one, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of variation so you can work with this. Ideally, you're going to be sitting on your heels and then we're gonna come all the way back. So you're gently walking yourself back and you're allowing yourself to just really rest entirely on your back on the floor. And then you're just going to bring your left palm on the navel, right palm over, and you're just going to relax here in this posture. Um, now, for some of you, you may not find this very, very, very relaxing. So you can just bring a pillow or a blanket underneath, and then that will help you ease into it. If you feel too much of a stretch in the hamstrings, you want to really support yourself and ease up. Now to come out of the posture, you can either slowly bring the chin in and slowly support yourself that way. You can roll to the side and bring your legs out. Either way, if it's too much of a stretch on your hamstring, what you're gonna do instead is simply sit cross-legged and then come onto your back and just bring your hands down and then do breath of fire that way. I injured my knee recently, so I'm gonna stay in this pose today. But go ahead and come into any pose that works best for you today. And we're going to stay here. So come onto your posture and let's go ahead and begin. Again, you're doing breath of fire, relax into it.
Really meditate on the sound current of Satnam. Focus deep into the brow point. What you'll find is if you're in the full posture, you're going to eventually find a place where you can relax into the pose. So at first it might feel like you've got a little bit of discomfort going on in your lower back, but as you ease into it and as you relax into it, your body will slowly open. So keep going. Just remember to find that nice balance between pain and discomfort. They're very different qualities and you've got to learn how to tell the difference in your own body. Keep going. You've got one minute to go. You're doing great. Stay with it. Do the best you can, even if you need to come out of the pose and then stretch it out and just come into a modified posture. Work your way into excellence, always bringing excellence in your mind, in your mental attitude. It's all about the attitude you bring to your practice. Keep going. You're doing great. And inhale deep, suspend the breath, stay in the posture, contain it, exhale, and just take a moment here just to notice how the body experiences that breath, that posture. Now, if you're in the full posture, very slowly come out of the posture really supporting yourself, especially your head, bring the chin in to slowly and gently bring yourself up. If you're in a modified posture like I am, just go ahead and tuck the chin in, hug the knees in, rock side, to, I mean up and down or side to side if that works best for you. And then we come all the way forward on the next breath. Now we're gonna come into our good old camel ride. So camel ride, Remember, you really want to do it from your base. So you're inhaling forward, exhaling back. So you really want to make sure that the head faces forward, the chin stays facing um, parallel to the floor. And as you come forward, you know, it's easy to want to do this kind of like up movement, like this little rocking from the top, but it's really rooted. So you're pressing the navel as you're pulling back with the hands, chin stays in, and you're lifting the heart to the ceiling, and then you're exhaling and stretching into it. A really different movement, so you're really rocking the pelvis forward and back. Now continue inhaling and exhaling, keep going. Use the mantra, use that inner current within you for deeper benefits. Really stretch into that upper back as you can stretch back without losing the quality of the movement.
Now, as you feel more loose and more comfortable, you can increase the speed if it feels right for you. Whichever way you go, remember, keep the quality, pay attention to the quality of the movement rooted into the base. Keep those eyes really focused inward at the brow point, stimulating the pituitary, going deep within. Relax the shoulders, make sure to check that chin. It always wants to rise up and down. Keep the head facing forward. Doing beautiful, last 20 seconds. Now inhale deep. Suspend the breath, squeeze the root lock, keep the spine nice and long. Feel the energy moving up the spine, containing and consolidating. Exhale, relaxing, resting, and just noticing how the body receives that exhale. Go ahead and give yourself a little space for integrating what we've done so far. Coming onto your backs in Shavasana or corpse pose. Legs slightly apart from each other, arms slightly apart from the body. Just resting there. Remember, if you feel too much strain in your lower back, you can just bring a blanket or a pillow under your knees. And that will really support your lower back. You really want to make this the most comfortable, total deep relaxation in order for your body to really reap the benefits of that integrative space of silence. Beautiful, we wanna keep the energies moving in this Kriya. So hug knees to the chest, wrap your arms around, chin in as you rock up and down on the spine a couple of times, balancing the energies of the body and come all the way forward on your next breath. Nice. So we're gonna move into a posture that is um, really um, creating a lot of pressure into the liver. And what you're going to do is you're going to bend your left leg and then you're going to bring, if it works for you, always working with the limits of your own body. If it works for you, you're going to bring your right foot to place it on top of that left thigh. And it can be as bent or as not bent as you need it to support this posture. So it looks something like this. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take so if the left leg is bent, in this case, you're gonna bring the right arm behind you to support you so that you can stay straight as opposed to like sagging behind. And then you're gonna bring this left hand into Gyan Mudra. So it looks like this, basically. You're just going to relax here as best as you can relax. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do breath of fire and um, it's only for a minute. So if you need to modify at any point, you know, just try to modify. If this is the modification, just allow yourself to be where you can. It's always 
the attitude that you bring into your yoga more than the postures themselves. Ready? So we're going to do a breath of fire in this posture. Again, just bringing and sitting nice and tall. So the chin is in, the eyes are focused inward at the brow point, and breath of fire. Make sure that that right leg that's over, keep that right foot at a right angle so that you can support the knee and rather than putting too much pressure, allowing it to sag down. Really keep yourself nice and tall as fast as you can here. And inhale deep, suspend the breath, contain the posture. Exhale as you slowly walk yourself out, supporting that bent knee. And once again, just shake it out. Come into easy pose as you rest there, simply just noticing how the body receives that. Nice. In the next posture, we're going to be doing um, actually inhaling through the mouth and slowly in an O breath, exhaling through the nose. And we're basically going to be um, doing crow squats. So once again, this is where a prop can be pretty helpful. And we're only going to hold this for two minutes, so it's not too bad. Um, but it's, it can be an intensive posture. So Ideally, your feet are flat on the floor, about shoulder width apart, toes facing forward. And you're gonna bend all the way down and you can adjust where you need to bend that. Your fingertips, your fingers are gonna be interlaced again and held in a basket and your arms are straight and they're straight down between the legs. So it looks like this. Now again, because I have, my knee is not happy with me today, I'm gonna modify. And so I'm gonna show you the modification. Um, that's a helpful modification to do when you're not feeling very good with your knee. Um, or if you have any knee issues, obviously, if you're not gonna be able to bend that, that, that way, just allow yourself to be in easy pose. Um, but you can bend a blanket, just fold a blanket or um, place a pillow. And then you can do it that way. So again, your fingers are interlaced, the elbows are straight, the arms are between the knees facing towards the floor. Your chin is in, your length and through the spine, eyes are focused inward. And we're going to <clears throat> inhale through um, the mouth with an O breath and then exhale through the nose. So you're inhaling and exhaling, keep going. So you're really forming that O mouth that as you're inhaling through the mouth, exhaling through the nose. Remember, anytime we breathe through the mouth, we're doing detox, we're working with the stomach, really working so again this is a very cleansing kriya so all the breath pretty much that we're doing is really supporting that
few long deep breathing. And remember that if you're doing any modifications, anytime you do modifications, know without a doubt in your mind side that you're holding the perfect posture and stay in that attitude so that you really can feel and experience that. Your body will be with you in that presence. And even if that means corpse pose, because that's going to be your best option, allow yourself to be where you are. And make your next inhale, your last one. Suspend the breath. Exhale and very slowly come out of the posture again. Just allow yourself to stretch it out there. Shake it out. And coming into Easy pose once again. Just take a moment here to feel the body. Notice how the body receives that. Now for the next movement, there's a, um, different ways in which you can sit. So you can either sit in easy pose or you can sit in a half lotus, which is basically um, where you're bringing your one foot over the knee and then the other resting under the knee or you can come into a full lotus pose. In this particular posture, um, full lotus actually works really well, but it doesn't matter. Um, so either way, um, and a good way to get into full lotus pose, you can stretch the legs out and bring that right knee, right foot over, and then you just grab that left foot, and then you bring it, and then you are in a lotus pose. Again, if that's not really um, a good place to be, then just allow yourself to be where you need to be with it. Um, so for this one, either way, no matter what you are, the most important thing is to anchor deep into the, into the sit bones. We're gonna bring the arms straight out to the sides with the palms facing down, fingers are all together. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to inhale as we Stretch to the left, exhale as we stretch to the right. And you're just moving side to side with the head staying forward, chin staying in, eyes rolled up, focused inward. Make that nice, powerful breath. Inhaling left, exhaling right. Keep going. Now what you wanna do is you wanna do the best you can to keep those elbows nice and lengthened. And you always, you also want to keep those arms up. So remember, whenever we work with the arms, that means shoulders relax. Keeping the chin in really helps to make that happen. Sitting nice and tall and lengthening the spine. Head is the most, the heaviest part of your body. So when you're off center, it really, really brings a lot of tension and tightness onto your shoulders. Imagine yourself reaching side to side. Keep those arms as fast as you can parallel to the floor. Nice, powerful breaths. Really work that liver area. Smile to your liver. 
Really bring that gentle smile to be able to really loosen the tension and tightness in your body. Call it the Mona Lisa smile. Doing your beautiful, just last 15 seconds. You can do it. Keep going. And inhale, center. Exhale, relax, bring the hands down, just stay within. Notice how the body receives that. And very gently, very slowly, coming out of whichever posture you were holding. Make sure that you gently stretch the legs out and shake it out and windshield wipers. Beautiful. So the next one is um, going to be doing breath of fire again. And what we're going to do here is our right leg is going to stay extended. Supporting that left knee, you're going to bend it. And if it works for you in your body, you're going to place it over your thigh. Now again, remember, when you do this kind of movement, you always want to keep that foot um, right angle so that it supports your knee. Because when you drop it, it actually can bring a lot of pain. And so if for some reason you're feeling a lot of strain, I suggest that you, once again, bring that handy little blanket so that you can get a little bit more support on your knee. Because you don't want to hurt your knee. You want to make this action and, and strain the posture work for you. So um, you can do it this way, however way it works. And if you can't do either, then you can just bring it right to the groin or along the leg, wherever you go with it. It's a perfect place. So keep that right leg nice and straight. You're gonna keep yourself, you're gonna inhale center, and then we're gonna exhale, bring the chin in, eyes focused inward, and you're gonna begin breath of fire. Again, remember you're lengthening, keeping the heart open, shoulders relaxed and chin in. Satnam, 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 satnam. very easy for the chin to want to be rising here so keep it in check as you keep it right angle to the body and just allow yourself to observe how the body naturally will start opening in this posture you don't have to try to go anywhere you just are focusing and relaxing the tension unnecessary tightness and allowing the body to simply move as it needs to and the big key is to really lengthen as opposed to collapsing into the posture
and inhale deep. Suspend the breath, see if you can come a little bit deeper into the stretch. Exhale as you slowly walk the hands back. Slowly come out of the posture. Extend the legs out as you shake them out. And just leave them out and just rest here. We're just going to take a moment to integrate as we simply witness what is going on in our body, how the body is receiving all of this. So for the next one, we're going to be doing breath of fire as well. Um, and this is a modified back platform pose. And what we're going to be doing here is, so just to give you the example, so back platform, usually you, you have your fingers facing towards your toes, and then you're pressing down so that your feet, your toes are going down to the floor, and your body is one line from the toes to the top of the head as fast as you can. Now we're going to be making a modification here. So the modification is that you're going to bend that left knee to come and sit onto that left heel. You're going to do exactly what you're doing as if you were in a back platform, except that you're putting it into the right foot only. So it's really important, really helpful to press those toe, that toe down onto the floor. So you're really, really, really pressing in. You're pressing into the left leg, I mean the left knee, and keeping the body as best as you can aligned. Again, within the limits of your own body. Your chin, so your head rather than collapsing back, is going to be tucked in so that you can really keep yourself nice and open. And we're just going to begin breath of fire. Really keep that toe press, keep the body powerful so that your body can support itself. And then you can just focus on relaxing unnecessary tension and tightness in the body and just focus on the breath. Now remember, if you feel too much pressure on your wrist, you can just bring your hands into fists and then be able to stay in that posture. Do the best you can. Really bring your excellence to the attitude of what you're doing. Keep going, you're almost there, doing great. Now here we go, inhale, suspend the breath, press into that left knee and lift the right leg up. You're gonna suspend the breath here, contain it, And exhale, slowly come out of the posture, shake it out, come onto your back, hug the knees in, stretch it out, rock side to side, and just stay here hugging the knees as you just allow the body to receive that. Good, tuck the chin in, rock up and down on the spine or side to side, whatever works best in your body. Coming all the way forward on your next breath. We have two more movements, and that's basically it. So for the next one, we're gonna be doing long, slow, deep breathing. And we're just gonna hold this one for a minute, um, but we're doing double leg stretch. So. Both legs are stretched out in front. You're sitting nice and tall, rooted, lengthen forward, 
press the toes, the ankles, whatever part works well. Remember, rather than collapsing into it, right? We're stretching into it. Keep the heart open, chin in, and long, deep breathing. Just allowing yourself to breathe. Shoulders relax, chin in, stretching through the heels, feeling the energies of the two currents. So from the buttocks straight through the heel, from the buttocks up into the top of the head. Feel those two lines of energy extending and really allowing unnecessary tension and holding to just relax without losing the action. So what we learn in yoga is that capacity to be active and engaged and then release unnecessary tension. I call that right effort. And so really allowing yourself to bring attention to the things that you need to give action to. And then learning how to let go of all the things that are unnecessary. That includes everything in your life that is unnecessary. Inhale, suspend the breath. Exhale and very slowly, slowly coming back up and just resting there. Noticing how the body receives that. Good. Now for the last one, we're actually gonna stand up. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to do torso turns, the upper body turns. And I'll show you in a second. I've got to adjust my camera. Sorry, I got a photographer. Sorry about that. So what you're going to do is you're going to be standing and you're going to be um, holding yourself at the hips. Your feet are a little bit more than shoulder width apart. You're really rooted through your feet, anchored at your base, and you're moving from the top of the body as big of a circle as you can possibly make. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind here. It's not hula hooping, right? So your, your hips are nice and solid, and you're planted in your lower body, and you're more like a mortar and pestle action. The second thing I want you to pay attention to is that when you're going back, it's easy to think like of dropping your head and then doing that kind of a droppy head thing. I really want you to think of your torso as one line all the way to the top of your head. So your chin is in, you're engaging neck lock at all the moments of that turn. Close your eyes and move. Just allow yourself to keep turning. If for some reason you have a tendency towards vertigo or it doesn't help you to move in this way, make the movement smaller but feel the same. Like you can still bring a nice deep pressure in this midsection by moving small with purpose. So the invitation is to move as big as you possibly can make those movements. Doesn't matter which direction you choose because we're gonna change directions. So keep going. Coordinate breath with rhythm. Really feel your feet planted into the earth. Feel yourself moving from your center. This is a really nice deep massage to those inner organs that are so important for us. That work so, so deep, so consistently. Remember that chin, 
Make sure that you're applying that black so that the spine can stay nice and straight throughout the entire movement. And take it the other direction. And you might just notice the nuances of this direction. It might feel very different. Just allow yourself to work always within the limits of your body. Exploring a pain-free range of motion. Again, just coordinating the breath. The breath, wherever it falls, is fine. Doing beautiful. Check your chin. Make sure you're really feeling that lengthening of the spine. Almost there, just 20 more seconds. And inhale as you come center. Suspend the breath. Exhale, and just come to a comfortable standing posture, feet right under the hips, just resting there. For some reason, you get a little woozy, you can turn a little bit more in another direction and then that'll help settle everything. Just rest there. Nice. Congratulations, you've done a beautiful job. So now remember, this is the most important part here. Come onto your backs for Shavasana so that you can be and receive back tenfold what you've given to yourself today. Make sure that you support your knees if you need to so that you can really relax and let go into the breath. You can Bring an eye pillow to make yourself really comfortable. Cover yourself with a blanket, make yourself super cozy and really receive all that you've done today. As you invite yourself to know that this is where the body thanks you and really says, don't worry, I've got you. I will take care of you. You relax, you've done your part, now let me do mine. So, we're going to just rest and really allow the body to completely relax as we center into the breath. Resting, relaxing, and releasing any tension and tears, sweet and anxious. Relaxing your shins, knees, hamstrings, and thighs as you let go of any and all unnecessary tension in the back, the torso, pelvis, and hips. Relax. Relaxing the shoulders, arms, hands, and fingers. 
rest within me. Resting and relaxing the neck. The cranial structure, the eyes, nose, mouth, and jaw. Every part of you relaxing. 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 Take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. Eyes are closed as you just wiggle fingers and toes, rotating wrists and ankles in one direction and then in the other. Take a nice deep inhale as you stretch your arms over the head along the floor, inhaling. 
So spend the breath as you stretch, reach and move. Big exhale. Eyes are still closed as you rub palms over the heart, bringing feet up in the air, rubbing soles of the feet together and hands briskly and vigorously, awakening your nervous system, bringing you back to your body, bringing feet to the earth and calm the eyes as we prepare the eyes for the light, opening eyes inside of the palms, focusing at the point where the two palms meet, slowly taking palms away. Extending arms to the side, legs extended for a cat stretch as you bring the right knee into the chest, over to the left, breathing long and deep, keep those shoulders on the floor. And then reversing left knee and over to the right as you breathe long and deep, stretching it out. Hugging both knees to the chest, stretch it out there. Rock side to side. And finally, chin in to rock up and down, up and down, coming all the way forward on your next breath. We're going to end with a meditation that um, is a meditation that works for fear. And um, this is actually we're going to do a three minute meditation here and then i'm making another video for you just for the meditation itself for 11 minutes which is the recommended practice for this particular meditation but three minutes is a good starting point and that way you have the kriya and then you have a three minute meditation and you can take it and extend it to 11 minutes if you'd like and then just close as we always do so we're going to be using the mantra Satanama, Bij Mantra. Satanama is the complete cycle of life. It's life, death, birth, rebirth. So it gives us the capacity to trust that we have the resources to face life as it shows up because life is a cycle. And everything that ebbs flows and everything that comes goes and so satanama is the way that we can balance and and allow ourselves to to hold the container of all of the changes in our lives um this bij mantra we're going to be using it to allow ourselves to create a specific breath pattern the breath pattern is inhaling through the nose and exhaling completely through the nose, suspending the breath out, and you're going to suspend the breath out for a count of 16. 16 beats, which you're going to count by repeating the phrase satanama mentally four times. So basically, you're suspending the breath out for 16 counts. Remember, when you suspend the breath out, you're activating the parasympathetic nerve system, which is allowing you to stay calm and centered, which is giving you the capacity to also heal the body because when we're in, sim in, in the sympathetic nervous system, usually that's stress, that's action. And so when you are in this moment, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of overwhelm, there's a lot of uncertainty. And so balancing by strengthening the parasympathetic is really helpful to switch that gear. Um, so this breath, this particular meditation is a meditation that allows us to be able to know that we have what it takes to handle whatever is showing up in our lives at the moment. So the mudra, which is the hand gestures, you're going to connect all your fingertips together. So pressing the fingertips together, you're going to place your forearms parallel to the floor. So straight out in front of you, right? Parallel to the floor, not up, not down, straight. And you're pressing into the rib cage. And then, when you do that, you're just going to open your arms a little bit more so that the space between the hands is about three feet. Um, for, for my body, it's about like 
right an angle with my knees, with my with my um, legs. Um, it's about 120 degree radius. So you're going to hold this posture with the sequence of the breath. So once again, we inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose, suspend the breath out for 16 counts, mentally vibrating satanama four times. So I'm just going to first give a couple of rounds as I um, say it for you while you follow, and then you're going to fall into the breath at your own rhythm. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to begin. So come into the posture, eyes closed, focus inward at the brow point, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose as you press the navel, pushing all the air out. When all the air is out, suspend the breath for 16 counts, and I'm going to count it now. Satanama, 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 Satanama. Now inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose, push all the air out, suspend the breath. Satanama, 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 Satanama. And inhale once again to continue on your own pace, mentally vibrating the sound current as you suspend the breath out. Make sure you're pressing into the rib cage with your elbows. As you continue, make sure that you're really relaxing the shoulders, pressing those fingertips together, keeping those forearms parallel to the floor. We're going to do one last round. And when you complete that round, inhale deep. Suspend the breath, squeeze the fingertips together, press into the rib cage, suspend, squeeze the root back. Let's consolidate all the benefits of this meditation, allowing yourself to continue to feel the rhythm of satanama within you and exhale. 
Inhale as you stretch the arms up, fingers spread wide, stretch, reach, reach, reach. Exhale as you shake vigorously, shake the hands vigorously, you'll the head along. Just above the head and bring the hands back down and rest in that experience. Staying within, just noticing how you receive all of it. And as always, inviting you to bring gratitude to the breath, the body, to you, for creating this space of self-care for you. Knowing that as you work with yourself, so do you serve everything and everyone around you. We take our practice and we send it out through the sunshine song to close. Let's press palms together, thumbs into the sternum, inhale deep. Suspending the breath as you bring your attention once again to your heart, maybe bringing back the person or situation you are holding in your practice today and exhale that into the circle. And let's end with a sunshine song. Inhale. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you. And the pure light within you guide your way on. May the long term sun shine upon you. All love surround you. And the pure light within you guide your way on. Guide your way on. God, your way on. So. Um, may you always be gifted by the strength within you. May you always know that you have everything, everything it takes to handle whatever is showing up in your life at every moment. So, um, just bowing to yourself, to each other, to the experience, as you bring the experience from your head into your home. And just ending with a subnam. Thank you so much for being here for you. We have a beautiful rest of your day, subnam. Yes.